The first and most important aspect of GOS is that it gives independent control of bandwidth loss and delay for multiple services simultaneously. So we can think of this as a, a two-dimensional matrix of classes of traffic. Um, in one dimension, we have priority with respect to delay. So uh, one set of classes has a lower delay, another set will have a higher delay. And then in the other dimension, we have uh, prioritization with respect to loss. So when we have congestion, some packets have to be lost, but we can arrange that uh, those applications or traffic classes that need to have lower loss will have less, almost none, and those which can tolerate some can experience a little bit more. And for each class of traffic, we allocate a bandwidth. So what we effectively have is a whole array of uh, traffic contracts, if you like, this like an SLA for each class of traffic independently. So this makes GOS a real multi-service mechanism. Um, the trouble is that one high priority class simply isn't enough to support uh, modern consumer services such as triple play and certainly isn't enough for uh, modern business communications using unified communications where we really need to support uh, voice, video, um, hosted applications, critical data transfers all at the same time. So GOS delivers predictable and differentiated quality. If we look here again at our matrix of classes, each vertical column corresponds to a particular priority with respect to delay. So if we track the delay corresponding to each of those priorities, we can see that the priority one traffic receives the lowest delay and does so consistently. The priority two traffic gets a somewhat higher delay, but again, it's consistent. The priority three traffic can experience somewhat more delay again, but again, that's consistent. And this is the critical thing for applications. Distributed application needs consistent performance from the network. Given that the network is, cons is giving consistent performance, the application can be tuned to use that and it will work well. It's when the network performance varies that the application struggles. GOS is a very easy to use technology. It allows prioritization in terms of real world concepts of bandwidth, loss and delay. And all the low level parameters involved are generated automatically because GOS is based on an underlying mathematical analysis. So this is in contrast with other mechanisms which are almost like Voodoo. Um, you have to come up with parameters for buffer length, for uh, scheduler weights, for a whole series of parameters which have no direct correlation with how streams of traffic are actually treated and certainly no correlation with how they're all treated when running simultaneously. So the GOS is designed for convergence, gives predictable behavior under all network loads for each of these classes of traffic at the same time. So here's an example uh, where we're looking at a, uh, an analysis of worst case theoretical behavior uh, for GOS and uh, more standard QoS mechanism uh, on a broadband link. So the bandwidth here is asymmetrical. The uplink is only 256 kilobits, but that's, that's pretty common. So here we're looking at how uh, the worst case delay behaves for uh, two classes of traffic, one for voice and one for some other application such as gaming. And on the downlink, which is typically much faster in these kind of networks, here we're looking at two megabits. Um, we've got the voice traffic coming in the other direction, uh, and we might have another application such as IPTV. Of course, the delays on the downlink are at a lower scale than on the uplink, simply because the link is faster, and each individual packet can be sent in less time. But the key point here is that in a typical broadband scenario, there's multiple applications that require low delay. So in case the theoretical analysis seems too pessimistic, here are some measurements of actual traffic uh, in the same kind of broadband scenario. In this case, we're looking at a video call going on simultaneously with some of these other kinds of applications. And we can see here that for GOS, uh, traffic in this class gets a consistently low delay, as the term guarantee of service would promise. And then the alternative mechanism Although the average delay may be quite, quite low, every so often we see spikes of very long delays. Um, and this will give very bad performance for an application, particularly when you see that the scale of, the gra of this graph is actually 10 times the one for GOS. So these delay spikes are actually very large. So the, the bad behavior that we saw in the theoretical analysis is something that can actually happen in real life. Of course, the link is very congested. 
but the whole purpose of a QoS mechanism is to give protection for critical traffic when the link is congested. So uh, this, is, this is why we need to test them under these circumstances. So the key point here is that the delay that GOS gives is, is predictable and consistently low, not just for the highest priority traffic, but for all the classes of traffic which are being given protection. GOS is very efficient in its use of resources, so achieving quality is not at the expense of fully utilizing bandwidth. So multiple applications QoS requirements can be met without having to over-provision or reserve excess bandwidth to deal with occasional events. The link can be fully utilized, um, by filling in with best effort traffic, we can utilize 99% of the whole capacity, and we can use 90% of the traffic for applications that need uh, guaranteed QoS, that actually want uh, good guarantees on the loss and delay that they can experience even under saturation. So for each class of quality traffic, it has a reservation of bandwidth which it can, it can use when it needs it. When it doesn't need it, the capacity is available for traffic in best effort. So here's another example of, of uh, how this works. We're going to look at a scenario now where we have a uh, symmetrical 1.5 megabit link. And we've got, uh, on this link, we've 10 voice calls. We've got a couple of data streams, which are each supposed to get uh, 200 kilobits out of that one and a half megabits. We've got a video stream that should be getting 300 kilobits. And we've got some congesting traffic, which if the other traffic isn't protected, will consume the whole capacity of the link. So here we see some, some traces of what happens, uh, first with GOS and then secondly with uh, another IP priority mechanism. And this is one which has the capability to prioritize voice traffic. But if we focus on what happens with the other traffic, we can see here with GOS that the data streams, which are supposed to be getting 200 kilobits, are in fact getting exactly that. And the video stream, which should be getting 300 kilobits, is getting what it should be. With the other mechanism, it's the kind of thing that can easily happen, both the data and the video streams are suffering compared to the congesting traffic, which in this case is consuming more traffic than it should. So even at the level of allocating and managing bandwidth, GOS is superior to many mechanisms which are out there in the market. So what does all this add up to? We've seen that GOS makes services more reliable. And for someone delivering services, just as a service provider, this has the benefit of minimizing customer complaints, it minimizes support calls, and it minimizes the chances that customers will despair of their service and move to another provider, uh, causing cost due to churn. It's easier to use. It's configured in terms of real-world concepts, bandwidth, loss and delay, which directly relate to the needs of applications. And this makes it much simpler and much less costly to provision devices to support services. So these things together reduce operational costs. In addition, we've seen that GOS supports multiple services, real-time, near-real-time, and critical data simultaneously. And this enables the provision of new services. This is one of the benefits of having a converged IP network, is that it's, it's easy to launch a new service because it's just another stream of packets. But that stream of packets has to be given the right kind of QoS treatment. So rather than having a QoS mechanism which has been optimized to support one particular class of traffic, such as voice, we have a general purpose mechanism which can support multiple kinds of applications and can easily be reconfigured to adapt to a new set of services. So any kind of set of services can be supported as long as the capacity of the link will hold it. And also speaking of capacity, GOS is efficient in its use of that capacity. So where, as we do in many cases, the, the link bandwidth is constrained, GOS enables that capacity to be used to its maximum. So uh, advanced and converged services can be, can be rolled out over uh, links that are quite uh, low rate uh, without having to enhance capacity, without the need to invest in new fiber or new wires in the ground, and certainly without the need to upgrade the capacity of switches and routers that connect to those wires. So GOS in that way maximizes the revenue that can be achieved given the existing infrastructure with the multitude of services and with the quantity of them that can be done at the infrastructure.
Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting.